Right now we're going to be nesting for loops. So if you have a multi-dimensional array, you can use the same logic as a prior waypoint, so the previous lesson, to loop through both the array and any subarrays. I'm going to go through that right now. So here is an example. We are presented with variable ARR, which is assigned an upper level array, and within it we have three subarrays, one at position 0, one at position 1, and one at position 2. Our first subarray contains two values, one at position 0 and 1, which are numbers 1 and 2. Our second subarray contains values 3 and 4 at position 0 and position 1. And our third and final subarray contains values 5 and 6 at position 0 and position 1 as well. So then we have our first for loop, which states that our variable i has been assigned a value of 0 as our initialization statement, and as long as i is less than the length of our array, then we need to increment i by 1. So our, our block of code will run as long as i is less than the length of our array, and increment our i variable by 1. Then we have our second for loop, which is for variable j is assigned a value of 0. And as long as j is less than our array at position i, which, as I've just explained, is in itself a subarray, then our j variable should be incremented by 1. And while all of this is going on, our array at position i and j will be logged into the console. So this outputs each sub-element in the array one at a time. Note that for the inner loop, we are checking the length of r at position i since r i, our array at position i, is itself an array, as I've just explained. So this outputs each sub-element in ARR one at a time. Note that for the inner loop, we are checking the length of array at position i since <laughs> i in itself is an array. We need to modify the function multiply all so that it returns the product of all of the numbers in the subarrays of ARR, which is the argument passed into our function. So here we have variable product declared as a value of 1, and our function must always return the product. Then we have an, our example here of our function being called with an array with three subarrays, each containing number values. So let's do something real quick to exemplify what our loop is going to going to do. So we have firstly our for loop, our initial for loop. We should declare if we should declare our first variable i as zero, and as long as i is less than the length of our array. then our i variable should increase by 1. And I'm going to do something real quick to show you what this code is doing. Um, let's place a block of code right here. And with this for loop, we're going to log into the console the contents of our upper level array, which are the first three sub arrays. R at position i. So as you can see here, with this first for loop, what this is doing is cycling through our upper level array and showing us the contents at position 0, which is the first subarray with numbers 1 and 2, as we can see right here. Our second subarray at position 1, which has the values 3 and 4, and our final uh, subarray at position 2, which contains the number values 5, 6, and 7. What we need to do now is we need each of these values to be output independently and to be multiplied to our variable product so we can get a single variable with all of these numbers multiplied together. I just did this to show you what the first for loop here is doing in our code. So now let's add our second for loop, which should be for with our initialization variable, uh, with our initialization statement, variable j, we need a different variable to cycle through our, our subarrays. So for variable j equals 0, 
and as long as j is less than the length of our array at position one, which is in itself a subarray, our j variable should be incremented by one. And that is our second for loop. Let's test this one out with our initial for loop to see what our code is doing. So let's log into the console our array at position i, which is the first subarray, and at position j. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here we can appreciate what our code is doing. It is cycling through our array one by one and outputting each of the values in our subarrays independently. So this is what we want right now. And we want to multiply all of these variables to a single variable, which is product. So now we've seen what our two for loops are doing in unison, and we must multiply all of these values into a single variable. So let's do that real quick. So we need our product. Oh, excuse me. Now we need our product variable, product variable to equal itself times each of the elements at position in our array's position i and j. Oh, hey, I made a little mistake right here. Times equals array position i and j. And we need our variable to return our product. Uh, we need our function, excuse me, to return our product. So let's log this function into the console and see what has just happened. So here we have the product of all of the numbers in our array, and we get a value of 5,040. I hope this video helped, and let's run the test to see if we are correct. Yes, we are, and thank you for watching.